So first of all, I would like to, to thank the organizers for inviting me. I think, here it will be better. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, and welcome to, to Valencia, because uh, uh, to me it's an honor to, to be uh, one of the hosts uh, for, for the, um, the, the meeting. Okay, I will uh, uh, tell you about uh, our experience in creating a company dedicated to uh, medical genetics. Like this? Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, our experience in creating a company dedicated to uh, medical genetics, uh, where we started uh, with uh, single gene sequencing, and now we are more dedicated to exome sequencing, which is the next. Uh, generation of, of uh, molecular diagnosis. Okay, uh, just to uh, uh, present myself, I, I would like to say that I, I would like to keep in touch with you, and I normally I, I tweet uh, about news related to we, with medical genetics, and it will be a honor to, to um, in interact with you uh, in, through these uh, Twitter accounts. Okay, uh, my uh, uh, work, my normal work, is at the University of Valencia, uh, which is very close to here, where I teach uh, genetics to the st students in the degrees of biochemistry and uh, the degree of uh, biology. Uh, that's a photo of myself in, in, the, in the campus, which is just uh, 10 minutes or five minutes by car from here. If any, any of you wants to visit the science campus of the University of Valencia, you are very welcome. And that's the view from my office, which is I can see in, in the, this building from my office if I look to the other side. Okay, and some of the collaborators that I work with um, in our normal routine research. That's academia. Okay, uh, and that is one of the questions that we uh, had uh, making our normal, um, uh, our normal ac academic work, research work at the university. Uh, we were um, making research, we were publishing papers and generating college, uh, knowledge, sorry, and uh, of course, dedicating a lot of time to grant applications and paperwork. So our uh, CVs were growing and growing, and we wondered if uh, uh, what are the real benefits that we are bringing to society, if we are giving to the taxpayer what they expect from us. And also, we were sharing this question with other um, colleagues. Uh, all, all these um, questions, uh, for, for us, it was a, a good experience to discover uh, that uh, we, uh, technology transfer is a good way to apply. Now, I will tell you uh, what we did. Okay, uh, this is just an example of the kind of uh, work we were doing uh, more than 10 years ago, uh, uh, describing genomes uh, of several species. We published papers as a, a, a usual, and we were very happy with the papers that we were getting, but uh, we were uh, think, thinking, okay, uh, we will make more and more research, and what comes next? And that is why uh, we had uh, our first um, idea, it was some years ago, where we uh, de decided to create our um, first company, So what the so-called spin-off companies from the academia. And the, the idea is very simple, so you go to the lab where you normally work at the university, which is really a mess, as you can see, try to find where is the m most interesting knowledge and take it to another place, which will be the company, the new company, which is based in the science park, and you find an empty place that you have to create uh, everything and put people, machines, and things like that, and then make business. Okay, that's uh, uh, something uh, very important to make business. What is the business that we uh, wanted to develop? Uh, we were doing DNA sequencing, a lot, uh, thousands of uh, DNA sequencing reactions, and uh, you know, as you know, we get um, uh, information like this, uh, millions of pages like this, and uh, all this information, as you know, is uh, uh, compiled or uh, sh uh, stored in databases at NCBI and other places where you have uh, complete genomes that you can access and uh, get information. But for our business, uh, we uh, uh, decided that the most uh, relevant 
part of, the, of this information is the information related with mutations uh, in the human genomes. What in the human genome? What is what, what is the impact of having mutations? It is, uh, as, as you know, uh, some of them are related with um, uh, human disease, and we have a, a, an example of a couple of dozen uh, disease, genetic disease, and the list is huge. That is what we had to approach. We have uh, there are known uh, more than uh, 8,000 uh, diseases, and so uh, to uh, approach this human. Uh, genome revolution and make it into business for us it was a challenge. Okay, um, talking about um, DNA sequencing, uh, we in, in, during the, our life, uh, short life as a, as a private company, we had to uh, uh, face the technology uh, check, technological change from a traditional sequencing to next uh, generation sequencing and uh, we will uh, speak a little bit um, about that later. So our area of, of business is what we call genome medicine. I have to check the time because I think we have uh, 25 minutes. Is that right? Hmm? Okay, okay. Uh, in genomic medicine in this area, uh, it is, uh, as you know, very promising. There is a path, a complete path that was uh, written by uh, some scientists like uh, Francis Collins, which is, uh, I'm sure you, you know him, and he's uh, in a way like a, a guru of, uh, of this area and, and who, show, who tells about what we can expect in this area when, when it develops more and more. Okay, uh, and, and entering into this area, that's why we created a private company called the Institute of Genomic Medicine. The institute is close also in this direction, uh, very close to the science campus of the university, is the uh, science park where uh, only private companies are established and you are welcome to come and visit us if you want, uh, any of you wants after this meeting, okay? <laughs> and we have, uh, as in many other labs, with people, machines, and different uh, uh, um, platforms, okay? Dedicated to DNA and RNA analysis. Uh, you are uh, welcome to visit our website where we describe what we, uh, what is our offer, what our um, portfolio of uh, tests that are uh, available, which is uh, which is really large, and so uh, we became a reference laboratory in principle, in initially for uh, single gene sequencing. Our um, list of tests is uh, quite uh, large; it is several hundred pages like this. So that I will, I won't show you all of them. Just show you an example where you can find the name of the disease and the name of the rel gene uh, related with that um, disease. This portfolio is growing every uh, month uh, upon request, so any customer can uh, request for the development of new tests. So in numbers, um, the company is, uh, includes now a, a portfolio uh, with more than a, a thousand genetic diseases, uh, 1,300 different <laughs> genes related with, uh, with them, and uh, the number of tests, which is complex because some genes and some diseases are, can be tested in different ways, is more than 2,000. Uh, as I said, we uh, develop uh, on, uh, upon request any new test that is clinically relevant uh, so that our portfolio is growing. And we are processing, now it is more than that, it is uh, around 10,000 samples uh, per year. So uh, the uh, staff is uh, close to 50 people after six years of uh, our existence. And uh, as I said, now, we are entering into a, the, the new uh, area of molecular diagnosis, which is instead of using traditional sequencing, Sanger sequencing, we are uh, using next generation sequencing. Uh, uh, that uh, the problem related with that is this is very um, um, productive, and, and the uh, amount of information that we uh, create is really uh, large. Okay. Uh, this um, uh, technology uh, with, with the platform that we have, have uh, developed uh, now is uh, very quickly being introduced into clinical practice. We have a, a review article very recent where we um, uh, can find the applications of, of uh, uh, the uh, clinical genome sequencing. It is, there is an error, this is not the, the date, it is last year. Um, okay, and we, we can um, see that um, genome sequencing, uh, especially exome sequencing, is now 
uh, uh, all becoming a routine for um, medical genetics. Okay, just very briefly to, to uh, show what is uh, genome sequencing. Okay, as you know, all, most uh, human genes are uh, uh, split between exons and introns, uh, so the information is m mostly concentrated on exons. Uh, and so uh, exome sequencing consists in a, a purification of the uh, uh, purple uh, areas, the exons, uh, selective purification for uh, uh, sequencing. So that's what we have here, uh, all these selected uh, areas. So after uh, getting or reading this I information, we have we get uh, strands like these, which are short sequences that we can uh, um, pile up and then get the relevant um, uh, information. We do millions of reads every time we put we set this machine on. Okay, um, there is an alternative, which is uh, instead of sequencing exomes, uh, in the future, complete genome will be used also clinically. But, but now uh, it is more uh, 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 an open possibility than a reality. Okay, uh, that this um, uh, figure also shows uh, similar uh, information that uh, when you make complete genomes, then you are reading everything, but then you have a lot of information, which are the introns, the yellow uh, areas, which are n uh, not relevant normally, uh, only are relevant uh, in a, a small percentage of cases. Okay, so uh, after following this uh, technological um, uh, trend, uh, so f we uh, became uh, not only a single gene sequencing laboratory, but uh, an exome sequencing laboratory, which is uh, more uh, complex technologically. How can we uh, bring this into uh, profitable uh, activity so that uh, we can um, be sustainable over uh, time. Okay, that's uh, something that we will uh, see in, in a few minutes. Okay, uh, just to, to show the, the, the problem generated with these two technologies that can be used for um, in the area of medical genetics. So uh, just uh, with this figure, we can see that we can see uh, we can make either single gene test, which is also uh, use, uh, used uh, nowadays. Uh, then we can um, um, read the information for a gene panel, which is a couple of genes from a couple to a couple of dozen genes, or make, make exome sequencing. We have uh, different uh, applications in each um, case. We, we cannot go now in detail on that. But just to say that now the, the, the possibilities are very much uh, open. So uh, to, in order to decide in each case where what is the most interesting uh, method to be used, we have a, an algorithm that was published uh, recently and it is very, very useful. So uh, following this algorithm, we can uh, determine what is the most interesting uh, method to be uh, followed. Okay, uh, going to the, to the activity of the Institute, of course, for us it is very important to, uh, to make public communication into um, uh, healthcare professionals. So we, we have an activity where we post almost every day news uh, related with uh, genetics and medical genetics. In, we do it in Facebook and in Twitter. And we also collaborate with the University of Valencia uh, in a Master of Medical Genetics and Genomics, which uh, has uh, been, uh, had a, a lot of uh, success. We are um, in this collaboration more than uh, five years now with the University of Valencia, and we provide medical education in the field to uh, Spanish-speaking uh, countries, not only in Spain, but in, uh, especially in South um, America. Okay, uh, we also collaborate with the University of Valencia in creating, um, uh, in the creation of a, a journal, which is a, um, a popular science journal or, or a medical education journal, we can say, uh, where uh, news uh, about uh, uh, papers that have been recently published, they are written in a, a short format uh, so that more professional healthcare professionals can uh, follow uh, the news uh, related with, um, with genetics in medicine. Okay, this is uh, one of the uh, uh, last uh, issues of the, of the journal. Okay, how we did it? Uh, how uh, did we manage to, to uh, make a, a, a new company 
and make it uh, become one of the reference laboratories in, in Europe, one of the largest reference laboratories in Europe. Uh, for us, we had uh, a few points that we consider um, critical. First of all, uh, in our team, we uh, created uh, an interdisciplinary uh, team. So we not only have uh, biologists or bioinformaticians, but we have medical doctors, IT experts, and other people, uh, so that uh, they uh, collaborate actively to develop this, this project. Uh, and, and of course, we take care of people, uh, because people are our main value, not uh, machines, but people. Okay, for, for us it is a, a critical point also the international collaboration. So that is why I was very happy to accept the invitation when I received to come here and tell you about this um, company. Uh, international uh, collaboration for us is critical and, and we are not Spanish company, we are a global uh, company uh, only after uh, six years. Uh, uh, for us, uh, the collaboration with the academia, with some examples that I showed you, with uh, medical education and other areas, also in research projects uh, that we are very active, uh, for us is in important. And we collaborate with small biotech companies worldwide and with any kind of business people who want to introduce genetics in clinical practice. Uh, as an additional point for us is that uh, uh, we uh, have a social um, um, uh, aim. So we are not uh, just considering that the company is money for money, but we have to be uh, to be uh, considered uh, always the benefit that we are bringing to society, especially in the area of rare disease, where we have, are developing uh, very rare tests, even when we know that we won't have so many customers because the cases are rare in, in many cases. And finally, uh, for us, a, a, an important point is the commitment of all the people with uh, ethics. Uh, we make business under uh, what uh, we, for us, is important uh, having a, a business uh, ethics and having strong uh, human principles for doing this. Okay, um, so just to, to summarize and to, to before uh, finishing, I would like to, to tell you that we are uh, always actively seeking uh, international uh, partners to collaborate either in research projects or for um, commercial uh, business, and we are uh, open uh, to this kind of uh, conversation. Okay, and I stopped. I, what did I do? Okay, just to uh, thank you for your time and open for any questions now or after I finish. Thank you very much. So please, questions, very interesting and really personalized medicine practical report. Please. Just a small question, you know, how much it costs? Well, uh, the, 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 the cost of, uh, of the test is very uh, uh, variant depending on the complexity of the test. Uh, the easiest uh, tests are uh, cost less than uh, 100 uh, euro and m more complex, sorry, a more complex uh, test can cost uh, a couple of thousand euro. Any questions? Yes, hello. Uh, so who are your customers mainly? And uh, uh, do you screen only for known mutations or do you also uh, sometimes have tasks to look for new mutations? Mm -hmm. Right, our customers are hospitals, uh, over Spain, Lat Latin America, or Europe? Four diagnoses. <coughs> yeah, four diagnoses. Uh -huh. yeah. So, uh, of course, our first approach is to search for known mutation, which is, makes things easier. And when known mutations are not found, then you uh, offer the possibility to the customer to uh, search for potential mutations that you uh, need to be described before saying it is the causative mutation. Uh, my question, how much such firms in Europe there are? Now? Sorry, sorry? How much, circa, uh, s such firms are presented in Europe in market? Um, maybe something like 50. 50. Okay. If 50 to 8,000, we understand that now the society is not ready to use this very widely because it's a zero 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 point one percent of population of 
Europe. So this is one of the po main pro problem of personalized medicine. Personalized medicine for whom? For very educated, for very understand it, for mm -hmm. wish, who wish and who can, who able to pay and who able to understand. If you are not able, pay, understand, mm -hmm. or wish, or your doctor say it is nothing. In Russia, we have, a, oh, it's so complicated, please, this, pill it enough. And the same, we see only 8,000. For business, it's a very small amount, but I think that it's very fine business, and I want to, vi want to visit you. But 8,000, it is for Spain. Spain is not the... Albania, not mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. and other countries, and only eight. And very fine, I see that it's very fine approach, very fine technologies, very fine level, but only 8,000. So it's a general problem, not problem of this firm or in others. It's a general problem. We need to make more that society understood us. Absolutely. For us, uh, making society to understand the benefit of um, uh, personalized medicine is imp very important. And also medical education, because uh, medical doctors who finished their uh, degree 20 years ago learn almost nothing about genetics. So if they do not take m courses to know what is uh, going on nowadays, they will, won't uh, uh, understand the benefit for their patients. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, and I understand that uh, the numbers are still very small. Hello, my, my name's Elizabeth from Australia. I just, I'm a bit naive in this area. I just want to ask a, a very simple question. Why do you throw away intron sequences? Right, we don't throw away, but uh, okay, but normally we don't look at them. Oh yeah, yes, because uh, the probability that you find a mutation in uh, intron, within introns is uh, small, okay? And the cost is uh, still high because about 1% uh, of the genome is uh, our exons, and 99% are introns. So if you have small chance uh, to find a mutation in introns, and then it costs 99% of your cost, okay? So you say, okay, uh, now, it's not normal to, to um, sequence complete exon, uh, introns to find mutations. But that is why I, I was mentioning that in the future, when um, sequencing costs go even lower, then it will be possible to make complete genome, and perhaps new mutations will be discovered in introns so that they will become more and more common. But now, the number of known mutations in introns is very small. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, of all the uh, mutational screening uh, mm, that you do with by sequence and all the possible mutations that you can uh, uh, able to screen for, for what what percentage of these mutations is actually a personalized approach, therapeutical approach known, and for how many it's only for diagnostic purposes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that, that's the main problem. Uh, most of the mutations that uh, uh, we find. Uh, even further, most of the known mutations are just for diagnosis. So uh, correspondingly, uh, when we search for a mutation, we find something like less than 1% of the mutations are, can be used for personalized treat treatments, and then all the other mutations are just diagnosis that can be used for, for preventive uh, action. Okay, so in case of family history. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So. Last, 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 last <laughs> <chance>. <laughs> Okay, uh, the thing is, um, uh, I, I, I would think that your, your exome sequencing, all this is by next ge generation uh, sequencing, right? And, and so far, uh, most of the targeted delivery personalized medicine for cancer treatment, the clinical trial were conducted using like single sequencing, all these techniques, which were um, not as sensitive as Next uh, NGS, okay. So actually, um, by right, you should not you, you should use the same type of assay to detect for the mutation to guide the clinical practice. So it doesn't mean that uh, a test is better when it's more sensitive. It's not always the case. Uh -huh. 
let me see if I understood your question. Uh, you were asking about the, the two alternative uh, methods that we are using, okay? And, oh. Hola? Ah, sí. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, you, are, you are right that uh, for personalized uh, treatments or medicine, uh, Sanger sequencing is still <coughs> mostly used, okay? But that it was uh, saying that it is uh, my time because I had a, a lot of, sorry. Uh, so uh, indeed, uh, uh, next generation sequencing is uh, be becoming more and more used also for personalized medicine. And I would say that in maybe four or five years or maybe less, uh, all uh, personalized medicine will be done also with uh, next generation sequencing. That's my view. Yeah, yeah it's cheaper, yeah. Only 30 minutes. Seconds. <laughs> Only the thing is, it's not about um, price. It's that whether uh, this uh, MDS is uh, more expensive or say, and actually, um, you might detect certain mutations that was not detected when the clinical trial was conducted using Sanger sequencing. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it is more sensitive. So yeah, yeah. Right. Then, but now in your MDS, it would be the positive. Absolutely. Positive. You are right. That's correct. Uh, because it is more sensitive, we find um, more cases when there is a small percentage of the mutation that you would not detect with, uh, and, uh, with Sanger sequencing. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So, I agree. We saw that Professor Manuel Perez Alonso is a very good speaker is a very good businessman, and we hope that personalized medicine will be developed in Spain and, on and over the world very fine with your efforts. So, uh, Vince, please. Uh, the very, very important moment. Applause. <laughs>